Welcome back to Coding Shorts. My name is Sean Wildermuth. Today I'm going to continue on a discussion I had a little while ago about Nuxt and how to get some of the features of Nuxt. So today let's dig into a couple of libraries that will allow us to more easily code like we would in Nuxt. But before we get started, just wanted to remind you I have a new course that covers ASP.NET Core all the way through to a view project right on Pluralsight. If you've got a subscription, take a look at the course. I think you'll like it. Let's get started. Just to remind you where we're at, and I will put a link down in the show notes for the first part of this in case you missed it. What we did, let me open up vite.config, is we added the pages plugin and the layouts plugin. Pages allows us to make routes that are based on convention instead of having to build up our router. And layouts are allowing us to create master pages or layout pages or whatever you want to call it, but a way to have a component we're building live inside of some page that has some of its own Chrome. We're going to talk about two different libraries today, and they both have the same sort of theme, and that is auto-importing certain kinds of things. The first thing is going to be auto-importing components so you don't have to import them every time you need them on a particular page. They're automatically registered globally, so you can just use them. And the other is auto imports. And that's one that a lot of developers really like, but I'm not sure I'm a big fan of it yet. But we'll get to that. Let's talk about auto components first. So in our project, I'm just going to install unplug in view components. I'm going to put the dash D there, make sure it's only really going to be used at compile time or at development time. With it in here, we can import something called components, which is a default import. And we're going to get it from this unplug view components that we saw, but we're going to say slash vite. And the reason we say slash vite is that unplug in view components is supported by the CLI as well. So we're making sure we're going to load up the default that is for the vite extension. Once we do that, we can just say components and execute that import. Just becomes one more plugin into the Vite system. And then what does that do? Well, that's going to look for a component folder and it's going to register all of the controls that are inside of it globally. And so, so if we go to our app view, you might remember we have this error component here that we are using. Now this error was imported here so that we could use it inside of our markup. This is the typical way to do this. Let's go ahead and just comment that out just to prove this still works. In our case, if we click that test error, we can see it still works without us having to import it. So for large projects where you're building a number of components, this can be really helpful so you don't have to manage having that import everywhere. And this is just to eliminate this. And if you have a complex project that has a lot of these components, this can clean up your code quite a bit. On the other hand, the other component we're going to talk about is auto imports. The idea behind auto imports is pretty simple. They want to take your most used imports and not have to import them on every page. And there's some benefit and some detriment here that I'm sort of on the fence about. But let's go ahead and show you how it works. And then we can have that discussion about whether it's a good idea or not. We can install one of the unplugins, auto import. Once we have that, we can go back to the Vite config, just like we did before, and I'm going to import auto imports, auto import from unplugin auto imports slash Vite. The same idea here is that this can be used in other situations. So we now have auto imports from the plugin, and this needs to go first. Because this is at such a low level, we need to add auto import here. Ignore that. And we can see that it, nothing's really changed. I can still get at the same projects I had before. And that's because auto import does nothing on its own. It doesn't opt into anything. But if we opened up, let's say that index page, and here we have some imports from view, this super common thing you're going to do in a lot of components. We don't want to have to repeat that every time. So let's comment it out and we'll see that it actually fails. 
and it fails because it can't find reactive and it would complain about ref if we're using it as well. And that's because by default, auto import does nothing and we need to configure it. One of the easy ways to configure it is by specifying imports which takes an array of basically import plugin. There are ones that the unplugin auto import defines, and one of those is view. So if I say view here, it's going to import a bunch of the things that can auto import around view. So you can see view and view router and other parts of view ecosystem as things it's going to look for and auto import if you need it. So what does this mean now that I've added that? It's working again, right? Even though I no longer have this, it's implicitly being imported for us. So having something like view is useful, but let's say we wanted to get rid of our use HTTP as well. We wanted to be able to load that up any time we want. Now, of course, it's not gonna know about our own code very easily. So we can actually say DIRS. This is gonna take an array as well, but this time I'm gonna say source, composables. So here I'm gonna specify anything in that composables directory I'm gonna to wanna to support. And because our composables of course have that HTTP and our state, they shouldn't be needed here anymore. Refresh it, we can see it's working without that import. Now this works pretty nested. So if we come up to this HTTPS, let's say we wanted to support Lodash as one of those to support auto importing anything really from Lodash. So let's comment that out to break it. And how we're gonna do this is actually add more imports. And in this case, we're gonna define our own object here. And here we'll say low dash. And here we could specify which pieces. So if we say sort by, which is the one we use here, we can see it's now working, even though our HTTP JS no longer needs it imported. Now I wouldn't go crazy with the kinds of things you're gonna do here, but I do wanna mention one more pattern, and that is something like Axios. Axios isn't a named import, but instead a default import. We wanna support Axios, we can't just say Axios is the object, because if we come up here and we get rid of it, notice Axios is the default, the app's not gonna work because it doesn't know how to import it and it's missing. So what we actually have to do is tell it, find it as an internal array where we're gonna say, this is the default and it's called Axios. This can be a little terse, but this allows you to have the name you're gonna deal with and default is default and the name that it really exports as. So we come back and we now no longer need Axios everywhere we need it. But like I said, you could go crazy configuring this just to get rid of imports. I'm on the fence about it because without these two here, will this read okay? Now this is a short file, so it probably will. But imagine if this were a really complex component and we had, you know, a hundred of the things that we're auto importing because we've managed it really carefully to do that. I just think it's going to make the code less readable. The goal shouldn't be get rid of all imports in your project. But certainly, if you want to use it, using the view, and there's a few others that are common that you can use, and even importing some of the things that might be common, like your composables, I think that would add a lot of value without going overboard. As with everything, moderation should be used in an excess. So this really comes down to what you're getting out of the development experience of Nux. So Nux has benefits far beyond just these four different kinds of things that makes development easier. But what I see out there is a lot of people are going to Nux because they like this easier path at doing development for Vue. So these two videos are really to point you at if you want these features and you really aren't going to get benefits of SEO and server-side rendering and all of that, you don't need Nuxt. Nuxt is a lot of code you're taking on in your project just to get some of these pretty simple features into your view code base. Well, if you've gotten this far, I'd appreciate a like, a subscribe, a comment, anything. My little ego needs to know that people are watching these videos. I hope you've enjoyed it. This has been Sean Woldemuth for Coding Shorts. I'll see you next time. Thank you.